let's start with humanoids and robotics and, and put them in the context of India. My interest or my body of work is totally at, at, at a time and space today totally uh, devoted to solving problems which are related to India. Yeah. A few you know, things which I wanted uh, to put your brain and take your advice and you know, help people who are going to hear this for two aspects. One, why they should invest in robotics and secondly, what are the use cases and how robotics solve problems. But fundamentally, whenever you talk about robotics in a context of emerging economy like India, mm -hmm. two questions come. One, politics of robotics, which is important, mm -hmm. to take up employment. Sure. Second thing, I don't have that kind of money. Whereas robotics, more the study of or science and engineering of robotics is way more than just humanoids and get get men's citizenship. So let's let's talk about non-sexy part of robotics right. and educate us engineering. How does it solve problem in the context of emerging economies? Yeah. So I think very good uh, two points. So let's take that one at a time. So the first thing you mentioned was about jobs, and so so I get asked that all the time because I'm sitting there trying to push robotics. It's much more, as you rightly pointed out, it's much more easy to sell it in a Western context because you've got uh, uh, significant uh, problems with the inverted pyramid in the, in the West. So my view is slightly broader and I'm more optimistic about robotics because in many cases we are enabling things that is not possible today with uh, even if you have an infinite manpower there are certain things that humans can't do. So I'll give you some examples. So when you use your mobile phone to navigate and come here to the GPS, the way it works is you, you need a huge amount of rare earth materials to enable that, um, that, that cell phone technology, whether it be satellites, whether it be what's on the phone. And rare earth materials are becoming hugely rare. There's a big international global fight um, now in the context of who owns the largest supply of rare earth materials. So one of the things robotics is going to help is in finding new sources of rare earth materials. In the Indian context, that is that, that kind of doesn't hold much water. But I keep telling people that robotics is much broader than that. So robotics can, for example, enable us to discover new sources of rare earth materials. It could be mining underneath our oceans, could be going to another planet uh, on, on, a, on a meteor and mining it and bringing it back to, to Earth. So these are examples of doing things that are not physically feasible without the help of robotics. So it's not about taking jobs, but creating new opportunities. On a similar way, in lots of cases, we are building these smart cities of the future. In India, in, in, in big metros like Delhi, Bangalore, Madras, uh, in Mumbai, we've, we've got a huge network of underground metro systems, high-rise buildings, and eventually, each of these systems will need a certain level of repair, management, uh, inspection. These things, they are not physically feasible. Even if you employ all the manpower in India to run it in a safe way, it is not possible. So we need robots to do that. So that's the kind of practicality side of things. And there is, of course, the other bit is the more efficiency side of things. So robots can do things much more efficiently with less number of mistakes. So indeed, it will replace certain human jobs, which I think are more mundane and sort of you know, boring kind of jobs. So we can potentially move resources towards more creative jobs. So I think that that is the, my, my vision on robotics is, is that. And the second question you asked was more about um, the, so I think the, in terms of the politics of the uh, robotics, that, that was more the kind of job side of things which, which we looked at. But in some sense, the other side of the story is that when we talk about robotics, there are certain things that we can improve massively. So in the context of service industry, we have seen many cases where human inefficiency brings down the overall service quality. It also improves net cost. It may be cheaper in the short term, but in the long term, the net cost of trying to fix something that goes wrong is, is much higher. So in the context of you know, smart machines, smart buildings, we have to address that. And I think this is a good way of using, the, using technology to address it. On that positive note, any message which you have for engineers who are on the verge, computer science engineers who can, or electrical engineers who are on the verge of doing research versus becoming specialist robotics engineers or AI developers? Mm -hmm. Okay, the one thing I have to say is that I think there is a role for all kinds of people in today's society. Whether they are coders, whether they are you know, designers, whether they are people who come to conceptualize solutions for 
that whole global system. So it's about finding a niche, not following the crowd in some sense. So you're a good example of that. I think for your person, I, the reason why I found you really interesting when I was talking to you for a brief amount of time is because, I mean, I think you're somebody who broke the norms in terms of what is a traditional career and sort of really follow your passion. So I think that is important. I think that is hugely important because in terms of driving something, it's not enough if you just do something that's 9 to 5, you need to have the passion for, for doing it. And if you are not suited for a particular kind of thing, you can change. Um, and that, that's, it's no point sort of doing something that you don't care about. I mean, I, I enjoy going to work in my case because I'm, I'm excited about the new kind of things that you do. Of course, you need the support of a huge network of people. So in my current role, I and mean, I do my amount of actual research I do is actually quite minuscule, but I direct a lot of research with the right team around, with the, my PhD students, my postdocs, and they are the ones who keep me young in my sort of thought process. And I think that's what you need. And so for me, it's about being passionate about what you do. From an engineer's perspective, it's about finding the passion. And, and for the Indian government, I would say it's about helping reduce the red tape on all of these things, giving people the freedom to express themselves and reducing red tape. That will really propel the economy and the research here. Passion and freedom. Absolutely. Thank you for this. It's an honor and it's a privilege to do this. And I'm sure every engineer and every person who wants to become an engineer or wants to become anything will benefit from that. Thank you very much. Uh, it's my pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.